I don't need to sit here and be like, oh, when LNG EDG. Don't worry, it's now. My name's Hysterics. I'm joined by Lyric. He's in America. I'm in Berlin, but I am not a European. Can you guess my accent? Well, that's up for you to, to discuss because honestly, I, I think it's pretty easily recognizable. For Lyrics, can you guess his? Plot twist. It's American. <laughs> All right, Lyric. Draft, Oi, us, draft us up. Cri crikey. Um, oh, Maccas. Jesus. Maccas. I'm not doing it good. I, I've only been there once. I've only been there once. We, we are in draft now. EDG paying the homage to Australia with the Nautilus pick because I believe it was a Nautilus statue that uh, yeah, got in put. The, in, the, in the ocean. I'm pretty sure my name's, yeah. on, my name's on it. I think I'm your, na your name's on it? Yeah, everyone put the, got their name on it. Um, oh. So everyone that was like playing at the time for the event, their names were inscribed on the statue and it was dunked down in the ocean. But the problem is, our Great Barrier Reef's dying, so I hope that Nautilus isn't messing it up. You know, I'm well, kind of worried about where it is. At least, you know, if it is dying, you you guys are right down there with it. At least your name. Kind of the we same thing you think about it. in yeah. years' time. <laughs> oh, no. um, There's actual proof, but we will focus it on drafts. We got the Heimer coming out for Hung. He has already played it once. I, I love whenever we see the Heimer come out in bot lane. Usually means you get a lot of push. We get a lot of aggression down towards that side of the map. It's Leah going to be there to enable it. To where for EDG, all of the Jax is a good sign because all has been the big one you have to rely on if you're EDG. But ever since Monkey's come into the roster, there has been a, a bit more synergy. Maybe time from, you know, the other players all playing together in the LDL. And with LNG shakiness, there's definitely some chance here for Edward Game. Yeah, there is indeed. I mean, EDG are playing spoilers. If anyone hasn't caught up with this strange draft, which we can explain in a second, uh, EDG are already out of playoffs. The first time I think they've been out of playoffs is one of the first teams, and they were the first team out of playoffs. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of EDG, and I don't think EDG have ever had this worse of a result. And it's crazy when you consider the developmental talent coming through, when you consider that there are still some big names on this roster. Yeah. Um, especially starting with JJ and Clear Love is also coaching this. So I don't know, man. It's it's they've a only, disappointing split. They've only missed playoffs even one other time ever. It was 2020 yeah. summer, I believe. Uh, we we were front row and center for that. So it is oh, weird. Yeah. But like you said, it's been a rebuild year for EDG. So you, you give them a bit of a pass. LNG, though, are the ones who have been struggling. It doesn't make a lot of sense. No one's really been performing all that well on their ro roster. Scouts been catching a lot of criticism. And across the board, again, LNG have just looked a little bit slow, a little bit stunted. They have a pretty easy schedule ahead right now. They are right outside yep. of the playoff barrier. So this is a must-win series for LNG. This and every other, further to your point, yeah, they're 5-9. They're and nine, Like, another loss, they go to 10, they can only reach 6, and I think it's doomsday for this team. A maximum of 7, a maximum of potential, not tiebreaker because we don't have tiebreakers, but a maximum tie or one of that middle-of-the-pack snagging spots that we saw last split as the Jayos are quiet. Where are we? We're in Sujo. But I guess the Jayos have muted for now. Um, yeah. Quick note, that's why we're in a delay because we go to LNG's arena after being in Beijing for JDG's. And speaking, uh, oh, <laughs> actually the Jayos are very delayed. Uh, uh, hello? You, usually we just don't get them at all if, if we miss it first, but I did get an update from our OY's Great Sage Ashim. That if EDG oh. win, FPX are, will make playoffs. FPX will be locked into playoffs if EDG wins. So FPX, actually big winners, uh, <laughs> potentially of the result of this series. If LNG win, oh. LNG will make their way up to being in the top 10. Uh, like as of now, they won't be locked into anything. But at least, again, it, it starts that slow climb up. Because with their schedule, they still play AL, WE, RA. None yep. of those killers in BLG, Tez, or JDG left. So really they still have a pretty good shot at making it and i have to correct myself as we see a hard engage on the vampire bot side that uh for hung just ends up being great heal forward for a bit of movement speed vampire gonna survive though without burning summoners uh, i said five nine for lng i was wrong five and seven so they can reach a total of nine as you said everything's a must win but if lng lose that means that outside that barrier of ten that teams can't get to that magic number nine as well that means there's always going to be a team outside of it so that's why that uh, FPX and future teams, I believe, will be able to hit nine um, and, and get a lock in. So that's always nice, always a guarantee, really, for each LPL split. As for LNG, they're not giving away anything so far as this 2v2 is starting off to the races. The Snake and Vampire are getting wrecked. That's a two minute 30 plate about to come up. 
Yeah, I mean, great, great pick. And the Heimer and the Varus, again, can create so much pressure. But Monkey looking to create some of his own on the Graves. Is the ring around the Rosie with the Grob. <laughs> Weiwei gets it. He's level three now as well. End of the line. Weiwei gets his phase rush and gets out, but Monkey pays the respect. So that time wasted, he's going to have to go back to his Raptors while you can see that Weiwei is got a bottom side path to clear. He's kind of waiting this out. He doesn't know where he is right now, hey? Yeah, has, to be, has to be careful, right? Maokai against Graves, not a whole lot he could do. He even saw Monkey having the red buff because of his top side start. Bolt Jungler is going to be making their way down towards bot where we've seen, like you said, LNG getting the best of it so far. One of the things I've been like about Heimer into hook champions is if you if you hold on to it, Tura, right, you can always block uh, the hook coming out from Vampire Sorry. to make sure that he can't find the ideal engage. But that's also why reasons like we saw in the last one, he's going to be primarily focusing on trying to find the angle onto Gala. You know what also sucks about this lane is the fact that with Ziggs, he's got to use that enhanced auto attack to clear bomb uh, to clear turrets, right? Yeah, and that takes away some of the trading pattern too. So for Hung, you know, clearing turrets is always going to be the priority, but I, I feel like that's just an, a niche little detail that is going to hurt this 2v2 that is continuing to suffer, as you can see. Yeah, doing a great job. And now Monkey going to be at least around on this side. Already got that scuttle, making sure they have prime information of anything going down. I mean, just wards all across the bot side river. So I really wanted to make sure they have tabs on Weiwei, who has been one of the players who who's kind of struggled on LNG. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. in his last series having an Ivern game in Weiwei. I think one of the people a lot of us think of as the Ivern guys. Leaned on it historically. He's always shown good performances, but even not performing on, on one of his signature picks uh, up against True. IG. It's a shame, isn't it? I mean, LNG, you are talking about the start. Like, they've had a, a very strange split with good players. But we also know that this split has been about remodeling the old LNG. I mean, who... Well, Hung wasn't in from the start, was he? It no, they, wasn't they, started, they started with Mark with for Mark. the first few series. Yep. And the, the change came in. Remember as well, change from uh, Crescent getting getting let go on LNG. Like, the coaching staff has changed. Uh, and the biggest thing for me, starting the split and kind of feeling why LNG weren't as good, is they lost their major voice. We knew historically Tarzan was a big shot caller in LNG. What made them so successful with him and Scout being a really good mid-jungle duo and the fact that they lost that dynamic where Weiwei's just come from a team that plays either top or bot most of the time uh, it just changes the whole dynamic of, L of, of the team that he was on. Yeah. And now you look at him and you're like, uh, wait, what? I have to play with Scout? Like, is it similar or not? I don't think so. Yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, even looking at... I mean, looking at BLG in the way they played, had a lot of... Oh, actually, who cares about BLG in the way they played? Fisher? Yeah, it's memory Ooh. lane, isn't it? Why is Vampire here? It's because Zika is so far deep in enemy lines. He's ghosted, running for his life. They're all chasing. Now, Bot is suffering because of this. I'm just going to let you all know. Bot is suffering. As the, the back comes through, maybe it would have been better to TP, but Zika doesn't have it available. Vampire over the side. Dredge line out. Oh, no! <laughs> 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 oh, oh no he just gets away with it and they chased him for so long they did and you know i think it's especially because it's edg they're down there in the standings you cannot understand why they're down there again full rebuild year anytime they miss stuff like that it, if that could have been a kill it just would have felt so right they deserve it the underdogs deserve it oh god look for edg at least getting topside uh, grubs are going down my, my point before just to elaborate because i feel like i'm a bit all over the place. I think this game's all over the place too. To be fair, like it is. Like we're going here, then we're going there. We have Asante running around the map. Dragons being taken. Your mind I, can be anywhere it wants right now. True. I I think my point is just way way trying to readjust the roster. Right. LNG trying to readjust to their voices uh, in comms. Be curious to have a closer look at it. But for now, um, look, LNG still a good chance of making playoffs here. As you said, it's just that run that needs to start with EDG at bare minimum with the easiest schedule they have laid out in front of them. AL, another big one for them, as we're talking about their series just earlier on when AL were versus JDG. But uh, in this game, Dragon does go down at the cost of Grubs. EDG got all three in the top side in the meanwhile. But just note this early game is really about Gala and Hung, who have a good lane lead, who are doing pretty good in the 2v2. And for LNG, they might be down in goal, but I am worried when you give Gala a bit of agency in game. And when you give LNG a strong bottom side that they can play through as well. And even 
right? Having serrated dirt on Gala already. The longsword there, too. He's going to be doing a lot. Is Zala looking for the all-in? He might actually find it. I mean, the, the saving grace of EDG. The all-out going to be burned in the meanwhile. Trying to get out of there. Zika is just out instead of trying to trade off that 1v1. Arla gets him out with the old burn. Does now for Weiwei coming in with nature's grass. Vampire's caught out. He has to flash away as well. Monkey for the response. Has collateral damage available as Dredge Line re-engages here for EDG, but the health bars are getting low as what the what? hell was that? What the hell was that? You know, whatever face it's making is perfect what? for what just happened. What was that? What the hell was that? The snake is not as good as the shy. <laughs> sorry. <What>? The... <laughs> Very sorry. <laughs> all right. That was a bit of a statement. I don't even know if that's an insult. Like, uh, all right. I don't know. It is. It is. We're going to see here, though. I mean, Nature's Grass comes out from way, way. They're trying to lock him down. Aftershock gets proc, which means Vampire doesn't take all that much damage. And then Weiwei holding on to the flash for a bit. I think wanting to proc the phase was first, but... What? Uh... Is that tilt? Is that, I mean, if that's tilt, you know what? I'd take it back. I respect that with EDG season. You know, I respect that from the if, snake. If he wouldn't have autoed the turret and he would have just thrown the ult to kill it, I would have respected that a lot more. Like, then it would have been funny. It's like, oh, look, just use the ult to, to kill the Heimer turret, but he didn't. He autoed it. Oh, God. <laughs> look, it's not that long of a cooldown. It doesn't mean yeah. too much in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> I just. It's just again moments from EDG throughout the split from people like Vampire. Wait, 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 wait. How so? Yeah. So, so so far here we are. We're we're four games in. How how does this compare to your LEC day? It is it sillier? Because is it less silly? It it can be as silly. The bottom teams of the LPL can be real silly. Like it, it's kind of like Casey from from Winter. Um, mm. Like Rogue. Dude, Rogue are the most frustrating team to cast because they don't just don't do anything. So at least in that respect, at least some of the bottom tier LPL teams do things, apart from RA as always. Um, maybe Ultra Prime as well. Just, but yeah, actually, I need, this to, I need to keep track of if you're going to throw a stray at every team in the LPL because you're, you're getting the, close. The bottom tier teams, like it's always been the case. I've said it on cast throughout the years. Bottom tier teams at LPL, like most of them try and do something, but then there's a lot of teams like, I think LG at their worst moments will play mid game su super slow and not do anything. They won't be proactive or, or reactive. Turtle, they are a bloody turtle, but um, yeah, look, that's, it's just the way that a lot of these bottom tier teams go as at least look for EDG. They're still, it's not like they're not doing anything, you know, they're still holding a gold lead in this game, even with some of the mistakes, but they still haven't led through in kills. Arla almost got a solo kill topside, like, as we get up to Grubs again, I feel like EDG, there's still some strength, there's Nature's Grass going to start off, Fisher flashes straight away, Chains Corruption out of range, hits through the goalpost, as that Bramble Smash was great from Weiwei, the Shockwave only a one on Gala, but Weiwei finally sets up the first blood, given over to Scout, it is a trade though, with both mid laners getting kills. And it becomes a, a trade-off as LNG close to getting a little bit more. So I think EDG are fine with, with the way the game's going, right? You have Jax, you have Orianna, uh, Ziggs. I mean, once you start getting some items, you're going to clear waves so easily to allow for that split push to come through. So I think the, the pace of the game is actually fine for EDG. We're waiting to see if LNG can kick it into a second gear, which I feel like they have started to do more of in recent games but still nowhere you know nowhere near as much as i feel like anyone would like still keeping it rather tempered we finally have first items coming out all up picking up the triforce so maybe this will be the start of something good for edward gaming well especially since fish is able to get platings in the bottom side i mean this is a strange allocation both bot laners have moved mid for the second round of grubs and it's a completely Six? different story isn't it yeah, it's going to yeah. be six when we saw no priority for Grubbs last series at all. EDG just suddenly think it's God tier. EDG, all is calling. He's like, guys, I'm going to carry. I'm the Jax. Put all of your faith true. in me. That's what, that's what they end up doing. Hell, even leaving him to take the last one by himself. And now, I'm going to try and force, hard, hard force Pryo in mid. And I guess further to that as well, you do have a Ziggs. So, passing oh, yeah. so much damage to turrets. Like, actually, EDG, smart game plan. 
Yeah, I, I love the pivot, right? I ignore the dragon. If LNG were going to take that, that's theirs. You gone mid turret. You just got those mice. I, I love the mention of, of the zigs, right? Because it means their pushing power is only that much stronger. And now it even creates an opening for them to be the team that gets into river with recalls having to come out on scout on Gala. CDG take this dragon away as well. I mean, for LNG, that was their whole stacking methodology. Metho methodology. God, words are hard. That's what that's what LNG were all about this game. Strong 2v2, play that into dragon, and they haven't been able to do that. And so for LNG, I think we start raising concerns here because you already mentioned Arla. I'm already seeing the scaling coming through from Fisher and the Snake. The wave clear mid-game onwards is going to be so hard to do anything with. I feel like for LNG, their options get slimmed out as they start losing things like mid push, right? They start losing priority in some of these other side lanes as well as this game gets harder and harder. Yeah, it's going to be interesting too because once we get to the point of like mid game standoffs, there's going to be two things we're looking at, which is how much pressure is Ala creating? And then out of the Snake and Gala, who is actually connecting with their poke, right? Because yeah. hell, that could decide the whole standoff in mid or standoffs around objective. Uh, objectives if Gala's poke is connecting and the Snakes isn't because EDG then would need to hard force with Vampire. And uh, their comp is pretty short range. It would be hard to follow up into a Maokai and a Talia. Draw off as well as the Gala. I mean, there's Chains of Corruption come through. Oh, that hurts. The Snake gets poked out, as you said. It's whose poke lands, but as Satchel Charge opens up mid turret. I mean, remember the Gala slows down as he packs up Q. Remember the Gala as well. Once those summoners are down, he has no mobility. Uh, Ziggs is an absolute nuke, and especially with a bit of extra gold balanced out through this early game, through that turret just gained. I feel like the Snake is going to be ever so relevant. It's going to make me eat my words for maybe laughing at him for the yeah. earlier play down bot side. You know what? He was laughing at himself. The Snake is the type of guy who can accept the bans. Have I ever I met him? So. No, but I'm sure because, you know, he just looks like it. His uh, plates just fell off. EDG ended up getting eight because of, you know, all of them, the fact that they got in mid. LNG True. got at least four. I didn't see how many they got in... Okay, it looks like they didn't even get one in mid, most likely, so... Ended up getting two top and two bot, so that's why the gold still being in favor of EDG and getting even more components, getting closer to more key items. The haunting guys now picked up for the snake. Do you think he saw the shy and just decided to name himself after him? Or, like, do you think there's any relevance? Or do you think he just likes snakes? <laughs> I want to hope that he had two favorite players, the Shy and Viper, and he was sitting there. He's like, golly, yeah. G Willikers guy. I took guys. I don't know which one to tribute to. And then, you know, he just, he, he went with the middle ground. Went That's with the middle crazy ground. that he sounds like that. I've never heard anyone talk like that, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the Chinese word, the, the Mandarin for golly, golly G Willikers, G Willikers is. <laughs> but... someone, someone let us know. What's the Mandarin? Oh. oh, God. That'd be hard to say regardless. Um, I will say, you know, maybe he's a big fan of... Maybe he's a big fan of Old Snake, you know, before LNG. True. Now going up against Old Snake. Uh, I, today, actually, as well. I, I remember watching LP... I can't remember what split it was at this point, but I remember, like, Baka, Crystal, like, Ella, all these guys. I, hell, they were, they were like the OG Draven team. That's what I loved about them. True. It wasn't, it wasn't Crystal and Hood, yeah, was it? No that, no, that came a little bit later. That came like a little bit later. I think you're talking about 24, 2015. No, Snake came in 2015, pretty sure. So it would have been like 2016 Snake or maybe OG iteration. But that's way old. That's that's like um, a Zatai Snake. Not wait, sure. Wait, wait, wait. I'm doing the research. I'm doing... The... Oh, you no. Do so it. It, it, it was OG Snake. Wandry, Beast, Ooh. Baka, Crystal, and Ella. Is Death Judge, dead. He landed wow. it. The snake landed it. Good seismic shot backwards. The scout is going to survive. Thanks to his shield coming through from Muramana. Gala comes in as well. Chains of Corruption. They were available, but Gala doesn't pull the trigger. Thought he could get the kill without it. As Zikra in the meanwhile, with all that charging through mid, is going to pull a side lane turret. So LNG are getting out of this uh, with, I guess, a beneficial trade. Did you yeah, find both, out? It was, it was OG, teams. wasn't it? You know, maybe we need to stop reminiscing too, because a lot... A lot actually happened on the map within that 20 seconds, yep. despite the fact that only one kill came across. So, so far, side lanes are getting opened up, which, of course, is going to be a pretty decent thing for EDG with the pressure that Ala could give. Always going to have to be a bit wary of Scout being able to follow through, but one of the things that can make up for that is EDG actually are running three TPs, right? So 
there will always be the opportunity is... Ooh, hung. Dredge line comes through. There is no explosive bong. Mega Inferno down from the snake as range not going to be an issue right now for LNG as they poke EDG out of the jungle. It's engages from Vampire. But it started to get threatening as teleport is being burned. 15 seconds before Dragon to find this pick onto Arla as... He's got Flash and Ulti available, which makes this hard. He can get over the Weaver's wall, maybe even five Scouters. He runs forward, Seismic Shove avoided as well. The full engage LNG not stopping, but all these summoners burnt all these ultis. They need to find a kill here onto Arlo. It looks like the answer is finally given over with a flip back and a kill over the Scout. All this for a Dragon. As for EDG, they're going to find a response in the meantime. Oh, they found one. They found one because they pinged it. They're TPing into mid. They're going to try and get another turret off of this. Quick thinking coming out from EDG and the Snake, even getting a Leandre's on top of it. So, Wait, keep going. nice little injection of gold. You're right. Huh? I, I guess, right? Back. Yeah, they, they, can't, they can't know that the recalls wouldn't be coming through from some members. But hey, at least, I mean, as, as an EDG, I still take that trade. As we look at the reset here, we look at the replay, rather. And Ala just goes all the way from here to the inner turret. I'm actually surprised at how long he was able to stay alive and how much LNG we're willing to commit for these kills. A lot of flashes blown, ghosts being used by the Cassante to get in range uh, to get the one kill. Still though, it turned into another dragon for them, so they're gonna be happy that they were able to take this. And with not too much on the map, there wasn't even really too much EDG could take off that as compared to if Baron was up top or, or if there was another turret up in top lane who had wave pushing. So at the end of the day, LNG's gonna be happy. Scout, two, zero, and zero on the Talia. And the question is, what else can LNG find on the map as they move towards the top side? Because uh, another pick, get the comp going, get this burst comp really running its foundation. But no, instead, it's just Arla on the side, finding his own time in the sun. And I think this thing that LNG is starting to get frustrated by, that this game, this map is so large, is so drawn out with so many outer turrets now down, that Arla's got his own freedom of space, you know, Fisher in the snake, the wave clue is starting to come through. EDG are coasting a bit here, Lyric. And LNG are obviously trying to speed the game up and find more options and find a bit more pace in it themselves. And that's what's going to be so interesting to see how these teams play around the Baron. Because we are so far away from, from Soul being, you know, having any sort of relevance that, uh... <laughs> if it was any team other than LNG, I, I would be like, all right, maybe, maybe we bait around the Baron. Maybe we start looking for picks that way, force away in the enemy jungle, but... Maybe not super likely. I think it would be a little bit hard and a little bit... Could be risky against EDG, who are now coming online with, with two items of their own. There's Baron spawns as well. Um, Baron actually pretty quick from EDG as well. If there's ever a pick on LNG, Ziggs does Baron quick. Orianna not so bad as well. Arla can come in. I mean, you've got an 80 carry jungle. Like, that's something to really respect as LNG. Especially if some of these globals are down as Fisher now caught out in the side lane by himself. The Orianna is going to try and make this a one for one onto Hung, but as he flashes away, Fisher's just trying to buy some time. But the problem is here that even with the flash gone, now you need everyone else to come in. Well, committing TPs. Okay, Arla just goes, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going in, bro. Teleports in, he's immediately out of there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. How much more are LNG willing to challenge? Hung was taken pretty low. So he's going to go for the reset. They want to fight a five versus four. They believe in the snake or something. I'm not sure. Maybe Arla's flank could be big onto Scout. It definitely is onto one of his old teammates at that as well. The old LNG top clears him out as Monkey helps out. And now for Weiwei, he's also separated. Gala poking down though is great. As Arla now at half HP. Zika still alive in his ulti form. The flip back almost connects. Niji back out of there. Very ballsy of them to take. Especially since the later fight ends up being a one for one trade. Yeah, I'm not sure if they spotted Hung recalling in the middle of the lane, and that's why they went for the play, or they were just under the assumption of, hey, if anyone, like, whoever walks in first, we have enough first to be able to finish them off. I think either reasoning, it's a fine idea, it's a fine play to be able to go for, but uh, LNG show in the end that they're able to answer back, and like you said, only ends up being a one-for-one. Well, with a kill on top of that, remember again that LNG still got the beneficial trade, starting on the fish up, but we watched this play again, and as you said, there is backs coming from the bottom side of the map, cancelled by Gala. Yeah, so they go for the play. Again, they actually, I, I saw they didn't see the Heimer recall, so it was just them hoping they could burst someone out. Zika going to be able to follow up on the Nautilus after Orianna gets bursted out. 
And if Hung would have come into this play with anything more on the Heimerdinger, like if he had his ult up here, maybe you could have transitioned this into even more as LNG. But the flashes come through and EDG do manage to get away. So LNG is still feeling like, you know, they're doing a decent job at, at finding these picks. But EDG are still the team that's up in gold. They've been doing such a good job at, at trading turrets so consistently in this game that I don't know if they've fallen behind in gold even once. I mean, they haven't. I mean, LNG are the ones who continue sourcing the plays. They group up towards mid. Ala now joining in as well, has no interest in this side lane. Gala trying to poke out, but even the damage onto Ala, not significant enough to really warrant LNG getting any advantage. ZDG have mid pro. They're just running down, hoping that LNG are going to get zoned out. And as Monkey finds Scout over the wall, he gets shoved back. Collateral damage does good work, but Gala now from downtown forces Monkey to flash over the wall. It gets messy with the nature's grasp as well. Zika tries to join in, but EDG are out on the right-hand side. And now we are just on opposite sides of the map trying to get mid wave. <laughs> EDG trying to find something there on the scout. Forced out the lifeline, pass it from the Seraphs, but that was it. Now Dragon's up. Looks like LNG trying to threaten that they're doing Baron, but EDG not falling for it. Ala doesn't have TP. I mean, that's why he's so scared. Hovering in this top side instead of managing the wave himself. He's like, okay, I'm going to be ready here. As you said, Dragon's going to go down. Fisher gets poked out, and we are literally A-ramming. We are just sitting mid. We are A-ramming consistently. As no one's really willing to give up their priority. And now LNG are like, okay, let's just start the Baron. Well, it's weird because LNG were threatening that they were doing Baron that whole time, right? EDG had no vision. So, so that was the play. But EDG didn't fall for it. And they decided to do this at the last second so late. Really needing to find a fight. That's what they're looking for. I mean, Monkey's doing red buff while this is going on at 4K, 3K. Weaver's wall there. Monkey is not even over the pit to go and E through. The ult used early. Uh, EDG, what is happening? Ala ulties in onto Gala. He won't get the kill, but he gets damn well close. The stretch line doesn't connect as well. Monkey finally collateral damage. Seals the deal, is jumping in. Ala has a new target onto Weiwei here. Nature's Grasp slows down the rest of EDG. But Farron goes to four members of LNG. The only problem is they're on the wrong side of the map. Is spotted out Ooh. with the back not in time. Hung now, the only person left here remaining. It's still another kill going over to Edward Gaming. But two kills for three to gain up Farron right under EDG's noses. I think that's still worth Honestly, just from the way it looked out, ooh, we're having a TP in now, so the snake might end up going down. He's got no mana, so I think he will be indeed. No support. TP now bringing in the horizon. Oh, TPs. Okay, yeah, they're like, hey, we're going to save the president. The snake's still sitting back here. Shockwave brings in. It's buffed for the time being, but Zika in ulti form is getting squishier and squishier. As Scout runs for his life with Monkey on the back end as well. Zika, a couple more autos, but he's saved by shielding of Kasate. And that was double TP from EDG. They burned a lot to try and get the kills, and they get nothing. And it would have been nice too, right? Because Zika was one of the people is one of the people who has Baron on still. So even being able to re remove another Baron would have been nice, especially when you consider the fact that Zika is going to be the one catching waves in sides, probably. So yeah, it just ends up probably. really going in the way of LNG. I don't know if LNG even started this Baron with the intention of finishing it. I th I think they assumed EDG would try to force their way in more aggressively. They get it so low that Scout's like, hey, I can just Weaver's Wall. They won't be able to get in. Zika doing a nice job of threatening them from being able to walk forward too. And sure, they're going to chase this down. They're going to be able to find one. But LNG are more than happy with the prize that they walked away with from this. That Nautilus just ulti to Cassante in W. I just, I just saw Vampire ulti, ulti uh, Zika in his W. So... Uh, that's what I'm going to leave the fight with. But as we said, Baron has been picked up by three of LNG's members. And, you know, all of a sudden, that pace L looking for that tempo in the sidelines lyrics to kind of match what EDG have been doing with Arla is being out-traded, is being one out. You can see topside inner goes down, mid inner goes down as well. That's two turrets in this 2k Baron power play. Just depends on what Arla can find on the bottom side as this Jack still, even without the Baron, is split bushing like a king. Yeah, and with this, I mean, they're back up in gold. They were just even in gold in EDG. Scout up is Ala. Gala's here. Chains of Corruption. Okay, Seismic Shove is there, but not enough damage yet. However, Gala facilitates that quite nicely. Zika just has to clean up the job, but he can't. Leap Strike over the wall. Nature's Ooh. Crash is there. The range just out as Gala tries to find his finishing blow. Wei Wei still chasing this up. EDG are running for their lives. A shove back means that Vampire's going to be first to die. As LNG keep moving parts and pieces everywhere, and Scout 
Starting to do a lot here with this Kalia in this game. Look, I don't care what criticism you have for any of the EDG players. What 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 homies they were in that situation, right? Monkey yeah. joining up with him and then you know jumping over the wall so Allah has a way to escape. Vampire taking the Maokai ult so he can escape. Like, aren't those the type of people you want to play with? Huh? Dude, they are the homies. True. Very true. Saving Private Ryan. The snake is Ryan. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, no, not the snake. Arla is saying, Ryan. It was, it was <laughs> all in that situation. But the less sense it made, the better it felt. So I was kind of okay with it being the snake. It, it should always be the snake anyway. Look, I mean, the game is even. It's two dragons apiece. It's a Cloud Soul. 45 seconds till the next. It'll lead to Soul Point for either of these teams. We have a three item Ziggs. We have a three and a half item Faris. Like, the poke from both these teams is out. But I think we've kind of found the engage has been big. As there you go. Hung has to flash away from said piece of engage. And you know, props to some members of EDG. Like, some of the pick tools have been big. But honestly, I don't know what to expect running towards this fight. No, it's... Ooh, Ala. It's flicked forward. Mm. It's going to be all about out in my mind he's really going to be the big one providing any dps for lng since gala did go the lethality route same again from the snake as well as the poke continues to land out i mean big piece of damage is this Ziggs, who's almost level 16 but hey there gala connects with the snake moves down near half hp as dragons finally started out but with mid getting pushed in i mean for lng to have a couple of options here Weiwei also options with the Nature's Grass. That finally flies out. Weaver's Wall as well. Zones off the whole of EDG. They get rooted up. They're going to come second fiddle if they decide to play this fight. As the Mega Inferno Bomb's there. Dredge line in onto the tank. Depth charge onto the tank. Weiwei absorbs everything again onto the tank. LNG are fine with that. As the Snake might have done the most damage. But nobody dies because it was, guess what? Onto the tank. Yeah, a lot of hesitation, too, to start that one off, right? I mean, you have so many, like, windows to, to just throw out that hook and, and start off the fight. Waiting until after they get Weaver's walled off and Dragon already goes down. So, it looks like EDG just not really having a clear idea of what they wanted to do there. And then getting desperate once the Dragon went down. All right, guys, we gotta send it. And sadly, uh, it all went. This is your cue. Pear shape. <laughs> onto, it was, you just said onto the tank like like four times oh, in a yeah, row. Yeah, sorry. This was such an I easy was, layup. It all went, I was like, it all went pear shaped. That's fair. I don't know. <laughs> it's still early. It's like 11 o'clock, but my brain feels like Fisher right now. Kind of, you know, a, a, a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, I'll, I'll get a good couple of shockwaves in my brain, but then also, like, it'll come back around and be like, what am I doing? What are we doing? You know, question your existence a little bit. <laughs> right now, that's it's going pretty far. That's, uh, it's, well, he's a three item Ariana. I feel like you have to. Teleport's going to come in. Let's do it again. That was man said in question. I'm looking for those level 16s, by the way, because shockwave big. Uh, the snake, almost level 16. Mega Inferno Bomb, extra damage is actually a very significant factor. As we fight around Baron again, we A ram again. Even with the Jacks, EDG are like, they're not, even with the TP, by the way, Lyric. They just don't want to sideline. No, I mean, it, it seems like they're they're too afraid of getting engaged on 5v4 and Ala not having enough time to be able to respond. But that makes you feel like they're just paying too much respect, right? Because you have the Ziggs, you have the easy wave curve, you can keep poking and prodding with these bombs. Uh, so the game just going to continue to stall out. The good thing for EDG is LNG don't seem too comfortable in, in starting an outright 5v5 themselves, right? We think back to the earlier kills they've picked up so far, and a lot of them were picks. A lot of them were running down members of EDG with Weaver's Wall or, or bringing way, way over. Ala just moved down, by the way, so now he has to TP. He spent all that time up here, and now the summoner has to be burned. Baron started on full vision. Monkey's over the wall, but there's a lot of CC, a lot of zone control. They're going to 50 50 it. No way to Gala just get that. Mega Inferno Bomb got close as well, but LNG decide to risk it all. It pays off. Weaver's Wall out as well to get them out. And Ala didn't even commit the TP. EDG are like, oh, yeah, Baron Schmarrin. Yeah. <laughs> EDG. I mean, I feel like EDG are in a spot to where they just need one good fight, right? They actually need Vampire to yeah. find a hook under one of the key members of LNG. You give him Fisher's Not Ball, the huge Wombo's there. You have enough damage. But the the hesitation, it, it's kind of funny, funny to me that, like, LNG seem to realize of, like, hey, 
uh, we don't know how confident we are about going front to back against the G squad. And EDG seem to have less confidence about their fight than LNG do. For some reason. I oh, know, they're both just like so scared. Um, teleport bot, all right. Arla is the victim. How much damage can they get done? The Jax without a mana, but he's got blue buff available. Grandmaster at Arms is coming out as everyone in the kitchen sink being launched at this guy. Flashes away. Arla now without the summoner, a bit more vulnerable. Counter Strike out as well. But everyone is here because naturally LNG are now going to push in bot. It's a natural transition, and Arla was just a setup. And it's the same thing, right? I think LNG, like, realizing that they need and want to lean into picks with the comp that they have. So they do that. Now they're going to be able to start seeking this down. And look at the minimap. EDG know they can't fight, so they're hoping Fisher yep. can salvage something by getting a turret. But LNG are going to get so much more. So much more. Against Baron, doesn't matter. TP going to be burned anywhere from Zika to defend this. As I guess that's a very responsible play, you know, like going home at 9 o'clock after what could be a big night. Zika's like, no, I've got work in the morning. And... As he teleports the top side, he makes sure he's on time. And oh, LNG not, just going to pull nice away too. from the Baron play. It, 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 it's more like he's just stopping by, making sure everything in the office is in order. And then he, he realizes he can go back out, spend time with... Uh, we'll say he was at the circus. He'll go back to the circus. He, cl he clocked in, but then immediately left. You know? <laughs> he, he, he just uh, didn't care? He just doesn't my care? Job's done. Five minutes in, a uh, boring job anyway. Who cares? Yeah. I want to hope that he walks out and then he gets promoted and he is his boss's boss. True. Yeah, you know, how much how much documented work has he got? <laughs> Not too much, but yeah, the boss believes in his ability to uh, to grow, quote-unquote. So, uh, good on you, Zika. Employee of the month as Vampire's going to face check this one. Poke's still good as for LNG. They start off this dragon. It will lead oh, to Soul monkey. Point. Monkey almost dead to Scout. Collateral damage almost kills Scout, but as the flashes are now burned, that jungler poked out, and LNG have a free dragon. EDG a bit all over the place. Arla, how did he get here? Just walked the long way around, but without a jungler, without that 80 carry jungle, LNG just moved back to dragon. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was spotted or not, because he made his way through bot side tri brush, and he walked near this brush with the pink. But I don't know if he walked anywhere near close enough to get pink spotted out. Or question mark pinks. But like you said, it doesn't matter anyway. LNG end up being the team to get soul. You can see there, Scout is even really close to being able to get his death cap. We're going to find out exactly how this happened. So Monkey, hoping to find a weird angle around, ends up getting completely bursted by Scout. And Gala following up with the key, very easy to finish. And once again, it still doesn't feel like we've had one single team fight this game. And LNG no, still being decent with that. <laughs> and EDG, keep, they go back to farming sites. Uh, we'll see if Ala gets to do anything this time instead of just pushing out to River and then dying once again as all of LNG run at him. I feel like the Ziggs is a nice pick, but if you never do, like, if you never do any damage or if you never team fight, then all you do is a wave clear bot. You're pretty much playing PvE. So, I'm a little bit concerned. I mean, EG are already out, yes. But that's what this whole series was about, was them playing spoilers, as a lot of teams in the LPL often do, but... As double control ward goes down from LNG, this has just been so interesting. Like a completely different story. I can't believe AL are better than both these teams. What what times have changed? What yeah. times have changed indeed? AL were like always the crazy ones, but you were like, ah, oh, what are they doing most of the time? Now that that has been the case this split. There have been some games, but less so than these two for sure, especially here and now. And I mean, look, like like now with the state of the game, we have four items completed for Scout. Now that his death cap's done, Fisher only sitting on the rod, so having more power in mid Gala as well is really close to being full build, sitting on the Brutalizer right now that is in that slot. So both both LNG carries ahead of their counterparts so far. Uh, and I, I do feel like Talia especially is a really decent time into some of EDG's champions, right? Some of these more mid-range focus where you have to walk in, you're just getting bursted out by these rocks. You have to worry about the Maokai ult that you're walking into because that can just stop you in your tracks and keep allowing yep. Gala to, to lay down that poke. So there isn't an obvious angle for EDG, and that's why they keep trying to get off these flanks. But LNG done a good job at warding them, a good job at having someone to mark them like we saw Scout in that last replay. LNG continuously, as you said, you know, that they're, they're good at negating these plays because LNG are like watching paint dry. They just chill out in the mid game. They wait for mistakes. And even though the parts have changed, you know, minorly, right? Like, saw Mark at the start of the split. Weiwei, of course, coming in now uh, over Tarzan, who is nowhere to be seen. 
it's still the same old LNG, just chilling out. I just want to say, again slow. there could be a difference. There could be a very small difference, right, between like watching Paint Dry and watching Bob Ross. All it takes is the Ooh. right kind of music, the right kind of attitude, and then yep. you know, then LNG look a bit better in that light, right? Yeah, but but like there are no happy accidents with LNG. There's very aggressive accidents when they happen. Let's find out true. if this is one of them. Monkey might be caught out, but again, LNG in the choke. Uh, this could be an unhappy accident. Fisher gets shockwave in the top side. Azala's coming to help him out. Gala finds Fisher as well. It's a two for one so far, but Azika gets out of harm's way. Gala tries to impact this side lane as well. And maybe LNG have the go button to start. What is a third Baron? But no, they back away. They don't make any aggressive moves, Lyric. They are the most passive team. It's maybe with the TPs. It means they will. Yes, double TP. Will they do anything with the Baron? Mm. Find out if EDG can at least stop it. Over. Arla. Oh, he's just in. He's just in. Without a jungle, Arla's like, maybe I can't die. 5k, they turn for the fight. EDG are using this poke. Change of corruption does nothing. Now four versus three. No poke landing, but Baron goes down. Third Baron of the game. Will LNG be able to end with this? Woo. Let's hope. I mean, if they're getting into a precarious position, right? This is where we're going to have to start seeing them using the Weaver's Wall to section off the enemy from turret and actually being able to push it down is hung. I don't think you're going to be able to kill Ala, but uh, it does say a bit of a hello. Just a little bit. Um, yeah, the question is whether they can end. I think we need to find out because this has gone on for long enough. The nature's grass flies out. Wait, Arlish, wait, 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 wait. No one's here yet. Will he survive though? Doesn't matter. Gala's there. Ignore me. Hung just helps out on that as well. Weaver's wall. Can we take that down, please? <laughs> just annoying. From Scout. And now with the Baron and a man down, maybe Yellow G can end. I don't love that Weaver's wall. Like, I get they're going to be able to push now because the snake is down, but. If EDG put up a fight here, that could have been a useful tool. We're going to see if they're able to do it. Shockwave is back up. Or does Vampire uh, go for the tank once again? Someone has to do something. LNG are looking to end this game. And EDG is standing by. Arla with the flank sets it up here as LNG take one Nexus turret, two Nexus turrets. Arla's flank is going to take a while, guys. It's no Sven, but it is very slow to come through as EDG just watch the world burn and do nothing about it. In 40 minutes, we sit through this. I I don't know what to say, Jordan. I just don't know what to say about EDG this split. Yeah, this one was a bit of a head scratcher. Looked like they really didn't know what to do, didn't really want to commit to side lanes, seemed like they were afraid because of Talia and the rest were just going to run them down, but also weren't willing to commit to fights. Um, we're going to go to a break. We'll be right back after this. Let's